The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit VoiceAmericaEmpowerment.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit VoiceAmerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Living Well with Ann Beal. Our show is a health show, a lifestyle show, and an empowerment show rolled into one. Get ready to hear some stories of success, healthy living tips, and suggestions to get motivated and live your best life. Now, here is your host, Ann Beal. Welcome. It is a good day today. We are excited because I have this wonderful person on today. I've had her on before on February 10th of this year earlier. Her name is Monica Brown, and she is going to do a show and tell even though we're on radio, so if you can think about it, she's going to show you how to organize your life around health and wellness. And that would include how to organize the food in your kitchen, what to get um, so that you can be well. And she and her husband run an an organic fruit and vegetables co-op delivery site. And they know all about this because they have children, they have eight children, and they are well. When I say they're well, they've never been sick, meaning they've had, I think she says they've had colds, or maybe one time they had a fever. Anyway, I'll let her tell you all that. It's pretty amazing. And so they are going to teach you how to eat healthy, but not only how to do that, what to buy, how to have it in your kitchen. Like one of the things they taught me was how to make apples last, how to have lettuce last longer, put some in the refrigerator in brown bags, some on the counter in brown bags, and some in the cabinet in brown bags, all this kind of stuff to help you know how, when you get these fruits and vegetables and you're trying to eat healthy, how to make them last, um, how to make it so you will eat them, you will see them. There's just wonderful, wonderful tools for you to know what to do. And then the things that you need to order, like who knew Omino's brags, Omino's things? Um, I did it. They said, get that. It's in place of soy sauce. Just lots of things. So not only will she tell you about them, she has them on her website. So you can go and look at a list of things that you can buy if you're not close by her. And we're also going to tell you the importance of joining a co-op and how it's helpful what it does for you. I am in a co-op and I love it. So I want you to welcome Monica Brown to the show. Monica, are you there? We love having you today. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. I'm excited. Well, I know, thank you. And I know you're not with me today, so I have you on the phone. We were supposed to have this horrible weather last night and it didn't come. Mm-hmm. That's so we're exciting. To- we're so glad. Yeah. Well- <laughs> no hail at our house, so we're good. Really, since it was, supp- it was supposed to be golf ball size hail or bigger. Mm-hmm. We heard some grumbling and, you know, some thunder and that kind of thing, and a little bit of rain, but it was nothing like what was predicted. Yeah, I wonder if anyone had what was predicted. I don't think so. I think it, it basically just went away, and that it was just, great. That was good. That was really good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we welcome you back and um, love having you on. And people loved your show that you had. If you guys haven't heard her February 10th show, you need to go listen to it if you can on the Voice America website, livewellshow.com, or this site you're listening to right now. Um, so, Monica, just kind of tell us. About, I told them you have eight children. I told them a little bit about you. But why don't you tell us more about why you wanted to do this show? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. And with with our family, we just, you know, track back 15 years ago, we recognized, wow, we've got young children. We're wanting to grow them up healthy. We want to be healthy. And we just kind of came to this place where we thought, you know what, what and what we say are two different things. And we're not getting that great a result. So my husband had, you know, neither one of us had major health issues. And he where we got the wrong path. So he was gaining weight, not feeling good. And 15 years ago, he was a much younger man, 52. And so we just recognized, okay, for the children, we need to do better. We need to not have the, you know, bad foods in our diet and all. And then the same thing, very, very, very bad digestion. And my female cycle was 
not good at all. Very difficult. Always dreaded having that come around. And so someone just said to me, you can do, you can change your diet. And if you change your diet, that's going to make a difference. And I'm like, really? Because I've been sort of looking at different things and reading books and going to doctors and trying to find answers. And that was never an answer. So um, basically we just switched over to eating a lot and fruit, and we even went vegan for a while. We just dropped out meat and dairy, which was good and cleansing for us, and then we have since brought it back in just fine and very happy of it. So it, basically, we just kind of cleaned up, dropped the weight, got rid of most of the issues, and then fast forward to 15 years later, we adopted children, and we have five birth children, and all of them age 2 up to 20, almost 22, 21 right now, but 22 months, have had over-the-top, extremely good health, and it's kind of right back down to the diet. It's not a pill, and it's not a shot or anything like that. It actually comes back to our thoughts, to eat more vegetables, more fruit, cut the meat and dairy down. It's sources for meat and dairy. It came to being that, you know, in a nutshell. Hey, Monica? Yeah. You keep cutting out. Is, do, do you have, is your phone charged low? Yeah, I'm at 72%, and okay, I have it plugged in. Yeah, is there a better spot in your house that you could go to? Maybe you keep cutting out. Okay. Just see if that's possible. Okay. Um, so I, I, yeah. I, I know for you, when you talk about the health issues, okay, all women don't want to have PMS problems. So that's yeah. really neat to hear. And for you, it sounded like it was pretty miserable. Yes, and I, I really, for me, I think it came right. It came down to being related to digestion. So my digestion was so bad that when my cycle came along, that was that's what created the issues. So if I um, once I fixed the basically the food processing to my body properly, ended up making the difference for my cycle. If that makes sense. So you fixed your gut, basically, is what you did. Mm-hmm. I sure did. Is that better? Yes, much better. Okay, all right. So I've moved and I'm plugged in, so we should be okay. Yay. So, so, yeah, so basically what I was given the information that vegetables heal and fruits cleanse, and then I learned about whole grains, and that was a whole new world because I was going to the store buying the best I knew how, and that was like a certain brand of bread that was whole grain and whole wheat and had fiber and that so that... I knew that nutritionists will tell you, you just need to increase your fiber. And I would try, and I would try to hit the numbers that they would suggest for a person to eat every day, and it was still just not a good thing. So it, it wasn't working. And um, I was eating iceberg lettuce. I didn't even buy the other kinds. And so since that time, we transitioned into eating things like kale, which I had never bought even before. So these are things that I wasn't raised on either. My mom taught me moderation which was great, but in her day, when you went to the grocery store, there weren't that many options, and most of it was boxed and canned, and then there was a small produce section, so I can kind of see where where our society got into, you know, it's just much more convenient to eat the, the foods that are in cans or boxes or even frozen, and the fresh, actually, if you get any lot, it's going to motivate you and help you. It's sitting right there. You've got to eat it or it's going to go bad. That has been very good for us to kind of keep ourselves regularly supplied with those kinds of foods. Well, you know, it's kind of interesting to realize. So you had pain like, like stomach and um, lower bowel pain, which girls call it cramping, right, during mm-hmm. PMS. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really is, when I think about that, that is the digestive tract. That's, you know, <laughs> it makes total sense mm-hmm. that your intestines cramping that you just, if you fix your gut and you did that through fruits and vegetables, did you do anything else? Okay. Uh, way, way back when I was in college and early married, right before I got married, I went to a doctor and at the time he, he was doing my normal physical for birth control at the time, and he's like, oh, you've got a huge cyst, and we need to operate immediately, and I, was, I had no idea it was there. Um, we got counsel from another doctor who said, no, women have these cysts. They're functional. They come and they go. She's probably okay, and he was right. It did go away, but it really got my attention because if a cyst bursts, I don't know if you've ever had one do that. I haven't, but women who have say it's very, very painful, And so it's something we don't want to have happen, but it's a cycle the body goes through. So what happened was I ended up going to a chiropractor. He did some adjusting. 
still no one's telling me to change my diet. He took an x-ray of me and he went, whoa, your digestive system is basically backed up, which is like too much information and not fun to even talk about. And I could have told him that, you know, okay. But I'm an 18, 19, 20-year-old girl in that time frame. I'm like, most embarrassing topic to talk about. But flat, when I was age um, 30, you know, 10, let's see, 10 years later, um, I'm realizing, okay, someone said do this. And this is what's going to happen. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to try that. And so I did. I started drinking green drink, and I started drinking that, like a fiber cleanse type product. But it would make me gag. I couldn't make myself do it. So it, it was a start. And I began eating more vegetables and more fruit. Slowly, my drive or my motivation got stronger. And at that point, I was also like I wanted to have children, and I didn't want any more of this misery I had gone through. And so I really think all that combined, plus a little bit of age, motivated me to say, wait, you're saying what? <laughs> you're saying if I will drink water, you know, first thing in the morning, if I'll eat more natural food, and if I'll do this for a period of time, I'm going to see this change. And that's really what happened. And I did see it change. So, and it meant it, I literally went into my pantry, got some facts out, and started throwing away the things that didn't belong in there. And it wasn't like I had tons of cocoa puffs or something like that. It was just a matter of I was cooking too, too many of my foods, like casseroles and things like that. I was cooking too much. I wasn't getting enough of the fresh. I didn't know a thing about cultured food, like um, kombucha or sauerkraut. And if you had told me I was going to eat sauerkraut, I would have said, there's no way. I can't, I can't do that. I barely eat a tomato. You know, I, would, I still ate vegetables, but there were certain ones I wouldn't even touch. And now, now that I've gone forward... There's things that I'll eat now that I wouldn't back then. So I was kind of a baby about some of that stuff. So what I'm trying to say is, for example, you and I earlier were talking, even before the show, we were talking about something like, say, Swiss chard. Well, there's people who will never eat that. And if they tried, it would be too green or too earthy for them. But they'll find if they'll eat more vegetables, more fruit, work this into their diet, five years from now, they might actually love something like that. I love kale, and that's what I've seen happen to me and my family is when we dove in and got rid of the food that didn't need to be there, that made the difference. So, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, what goes in a pantry, I can do that, and and hopefully people can start adding those things in as they start weeding out the other things and see that make a difference for them. Okay. Well, so would you just start taking them through? Because one of the things that has really blown me away, of course, is all the illnesses and how you guys got well. Um, how about your kids? Because I, I know one of the things that really is amazing is your kids not being sick. Right. Okay. So, and you're right. When you said that we haven't been sick, we haven't been sick. We have had, if we've had a cold, it's barely a cold. No one's been down for more than a day. So that, when I look back and go, wow, that just happened. That's that's incredible. Our oldest son is 12 May, and he's never gone to the doctor for any sickness of any kind, and neither have the other children. So we're talking no ear infections, none of that. And really, the the answer is food is fuel and rest is recovery. So for us, we make sure the kids are eating well most of the time. We're not, you know, food Nazis either, but we are eating really well. Our foundation is there, and then we rest, and we, you know, we try to have healthy habits. So. That has made the difference. Way back, we had two little children that we were trying to adopt to the foster system, and one of them had horrible digestion, very bad breath, and was also on um, a substance like Ritalin. It was Adderall, and it was for attention challenges. And within just a few months, through drinking water every day and eating natural foods, his digestion cleared up, his breath cleared up, his doctor took him off of his medication. People who met him did not know that he had attention problems, school teachers, people at church. So truly, diet makes a difference. And I, I wish people would start there because you can go down so many rabbit trails throughout your life buying different products and trying different you know, things when really your foundation is really important. And so that's what I teach in my demos. I just walk through in my demonstrations, kind of a show and tell, like you mentioned, of what it is that we do and what we changed in our life to create that kind of result. That That is amazing. So when I said, are they ever sick, you said they just get, like, sometimes they've had headaches. Yes, and one of my sons in particular, he, he loves Legos, and he'll sit four hours, literally two or three hours at a time. And he did that to such a degree that he would he even rubbed a little callus on his chin because he had his knee to his chin doing all this detail work, and he would get headaches. And we really attributed that more to just needing water and needing to get up and move around 
not, oh, we have a, you know, we're sick because we're not eating well. So they're very active, energetic, high energy. Um, three of them are adopted, so it's not like all of us have great, D, you know, the same DNA. Let me say that. We all have good DNA, but we're strong and healthy, and I, I believe it's because I learned something I didn't know before, and that was how important it is what I do on a daily basis with my diet. What am I characterized by overall? So we still have ice cream. We still have cake and all those different things. We just changed the kind of ice cream we bought. We changed the way we made our cakes. And we're not a gluten-free family either, though a lot of our meals are gluten-free just because they are naturally that way. Um, So, yes, it's made a huge difference. Well, and do you still mill your flour? I do mill flour. So usually the first thing I ask people to do is don't jump right into flour because many people have gluten problems or problems with what they've been eating. So I say, let's start with eating, you know, honing on the vegetables, honing on the fruit, do some whole grains, but maybe work on things like quinoa, which almost nobody has trouble with. That's super nutritious for them. And so I teach them that. And then when they're ready, I'll take them into the milling the grain. And what happened to me is I didn't think I was a person who would ever make my own flour. That just sounded like I would be a pioneer <laughs> girl or something. Yeah. And so I was like, ah, I don't see that in my life. But when a friend of mine, which actually is Kristen Archer, who has been on your show before with the essential oils, she just brought me a roll one day, a bread roll, and she was here. This is I made this for you. I'm like, oh wow, thank you. And then she told me that she used a mill, and in her bread there was different kinds of grain, and there was even beans. She had some dried beans that she ground in there. She goes, it's for protein. I'm like, okay. And I ate it, and I went, oh. Once I understood why I would even mill grain, why I would do that. Then I was sold, like, okay, Eureka, here's my chat. Here's what happened. I'm going to the store buying old flour. I'm going to the store buying bread that's got preservatives. No wonder it won't move through my body. Wonder, you know, no wonder it's glue. And what actually happens when I do a demonstration, I usually show people a little, it's called grain vials. And the first vial has whole grain in it, like wheat. In this case, it's wheat. And then I show them, okay, now here's the oil that gets extracted out. Here's the wheat germ that gets extracted out. Here's the bran and the middlings, and then what's left is kind of a, um, like a, it's actually a tan wheat. It's a, it's, it's a, the powder that you use that you find at the store, only it's been bleached, and so now it's pure white. And that's how you get the whole, I mean, you get white wheat at the store, because wheat, when you just grind up wheat, is more of a, a golden or a tan or kind of a brownish color, and sometimes it's even almost a, a bronzy red color. And so that, when you see white flour, you're seeing something that's been very processed to get there. So once I learned that, that's why I went into milling my own grain. And so I encourage people to do that. Um, make their own flour because then any cake you make, any cookies, any biscuits, any anything you would normally use from just a regular recipe book that has flour in it, you can now put fresh flour in it and you get totally and your vitamins are fresh from the grain, from the mill. And if you let that flour sit out like the store does, your vitamins will oxidize right out. And then it has to be enriched if you want to get any value from it. So, yeah, so I do mill flour. And what we do is we mill it like once a week. And we keep it frozen in a big two-gallon bag for our family. And then we'll make, you know, you name it, we make it. We make tortillas. We make biscuits. We make cakes, like I mentioned before. We definitely make bread and cinnamon rolls and things like that. And you can make wonderful pizza crust with it as well. So you're really not feeling like you're missing out. You're actually uh, excited because you go, whoa, I can eat this, and it's not going to harm me. But if someone has a gluten problem, I would just say stick with your vegetables and fruit, cleanse up, heal your gut, you know, before you jump into a meal. But a meal is a great, great kitchen item, and I wouldn't, I want that. I, don't, I never want my kitchen without a meal. Well, you know, what's interesting about that, people who mill their own flour, I don't know if I've ever met anyone who mills their own flour that has any of the gluten issues. And so I've I've wondered about that, that there's something that they do or there's something about the, you know, what happens to it. I don't know, but it's pretty fascinating to me. Where would someone get a mill? Okay, you could just search online for a Nutramil. That's a, that's my favorite one, and I don't sell them, but I have a friend in Colorado that sells them. There's people all over the Internet that sell them. So if you go for a Nutramil, it's just high quality. It'll work. You put the grain in, and it will it just runs, sounds a little bit like a vacuum cleaner when it's running, and within less than 10 minutes, you'll have up to 20 cups of flour. Or a lot of people use like a Blendtec blender or a Vitamix blender. Vitamix comes with two different 
blenders and you, one is for dry things like grain. And so like if you think about it, if you were to make a cake for your family, you only need a few cups of flour, maybe even less than two cups of flour to make the cake. So if you just have a good blender, you can get the grain, put it in there, grind it as fine as you want it and use it. And so that, that works. So you can have, you think of a mill as a machine, but it could be just a, something you already have in your kitchen. Wow. Okay. Well, let's go to break. And when we come back, we're going to have you take people through exactly how to um, organize their kitchen. Okay. For their food. Can you talk about that when we get back? us on Twitter for more great ideas at Voice America Empowerment. Sunshine Herbs in Saginaw, Texas on Main Street, Business 287 has all of your supplement needs and healthy food products. So my suggestion for you, visit Sunshine Herbs today and let their knowledgeable staff who know all their products and their naturopathic doctor lead you to a life of health and wellness so that you too can live well. Life Solutions Coaching and Counseling in Fort Worth, Texas is a full-service wellness clinic providing individual, group, and family counseling, one-on-one coaching for life and wellness, and naturopathic treatments of medical massage therapy combined with essential oils to ensure you reach your health and wellness goals. Sessions are available in person or by phone. Get started on your new life today. Just call 817-232-1363 or go to lifesolutionscoachingandcounseling.com or email them at lifesolutions.com cc at yahoo.com we're on facebook along with some of the greatest minds of the world and that includes you visit us on facebook at voice america empowerment you are listening to living well with ann beal we'd love to hear from you with comments and questions about the show Please send us an email to ablivingwell at gmail.com. That's ablivingwell at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's show. Welcome back. We have Monica Brown from thehealthsource.org. That's thehealthsource.org. And she now is going to share with us how to organize our life around health and wellness. Monica has eight children, and her and her husband run a um, organic fruits and vegetables co-op. So, Monica, please share with us. You told us all about how you had gotten sick and you got well through fresh fruits and vegetables and milling your own flour and things like that. So, is there anything that we didn't hear about how you got well? Um, you know, I think it's just that simple. It really is. It's just that we went into the pantry and began taking things out. And so what I would suggest, number one, is that people could go to my website, yourhealthsource.org, and check it out because there's lots of just black and white information where you can read at your pace. There's also a blog there at the top. You can go to the blog and click through, and there's recipes that will help people. So there's two things there, and there's dry goods listed there, and dry goods are grocery items. So you can look there and go, okay, I don't have that in my pantry. Make it a goal. I took a list and just made it a goal. So in other words, for example, if I'm trying to um, put more whole grains in my diet, I started with whole wheat, and then I added quinoa, and then I added millet little by little and just began experimenting with it and learning how to use it. So same thing if I were looking at something like beans. Okay, I grew up with pinto beans. That was one of the things that we I grew up on. So now my family enjoys navy beans, pinto beans, black beans. Uh, we, we'll do lentils, okay, different kinds of lentils. We've done split peas in the past, things I don't even remember eating as a child. I'm sure I probably did at least once or twice. But So that's what I would suggest. If you really want to learn, you really want to change, go to yourhealthsource.org. There's also a link to YouTube. So what I'm talking about, when I do a demonstration, you can see an example of that, and you can learn, and it's totally free for you. So if you took our dry good list and just looked at it, you'll see the sugars that are in my pantry, 
You'll see the oils that are in my pantry. And then I'll walk you through it. So, you know, basically the first thing we did was just emphasize the fruits and vegetables. So if you were walking into a grocery store today or if you were joining a co-op, get the vegetables, get the fruit, bring them home. I mean, it's that simple. Bring them home and then begin working with them. So when you have them, the good thing, the bad thing about fruits and vegetables is they will go bad, but the good thing is they will go bad. So they're, they're sort of calling your name. Use me, eat me, get involved, do this. Whereas, um, you know, if we don't have those things in our pantry or we don't have them on our counter, we're going to be hungry and we're going to end up eating something. So this is a way to, to support your goal of being healthy and well and raising up a healthy family is to basically proactively anticipate, I'm going to need to eat the next three or four days, just like I always will the rest of my life. So I'm going to get ahead of the game. I'm going to get this stuff and bring it home. And I'm going to put my foot in front of me, you know, start begin, begin with things you like and then add on maybe one item that you don't like or join a co-op because for us with our co-op, we send out food. The most of it's very normal food. There might be one thing in there to try brand new that maybe you've never tried before or maybe two. So for me in our box, there's kale. Well, kale is something I did not grow up on, but you look up kale and you're going to find out it's a cancer fighter and it's something to grow and grow in love with, right? Um, Okay, so if I walk through my pantry, is that what you want me to do? Well, yeah. Like one of, one of the things that, you know, when you think about kale is that a lot of people say they don't like the taste. But the longer that, you're, that you change your diet on, on fruits and vegetables, everything tastes better. And kale actually begins to taste really good. Did you have that experience? Absolutely. And I know I, I heard through the grapevine that you have been cutting out sugar out of your diet. <laughs> <laughs> I have been. And really? Yeah, yay for you. Um, and we, we don't have, we do have sugar here, but we generally have the, you know, the better sugars. So we didn't zero it out necessarily, but it's great to do that because when you do, you sort of reset your taste buds. And when you eat really good kale, now you can come across kale that's bitter, just like you can have bitter lettuce. So you just got to keep in mind, sometimes I'm not going to like this, or maybe it really is not good. But when it's good, it's sweet, it's delicious. I, I wish everybody could just come and be in my kitchen for a few minutes when we're going through our co-op box because my little child that's two and my little child at six will sit down at a little table and they'll tear the kale and they're asking me, can I eat the stems? Well, I never would have said, mommy, can I eat the stems? They sit and they eat the kale and they eat the stems. They, they, they ask me to chop off a piece of cabbage and give them a piece of red cabbage or green cabbage so they can just eat it. They like it. And we think there's no way, but we were, but we, unfortunately we kind of all got in touch with our sweet tooth, I think, over the years. Yes. And now that if you have a fresher palate and you're, you know, you're not so addicted to the sugar, the kale is sweet. The apples are amazing. The cabbage is, oh, that's really good. We found that the same thing happened when we began to make our own homemade bread, the whole grain. We, would, we ate a lot of it in the very beginning, and it was almost like our body was like, oh, you found it. It's so good. Eat some more. I mean, that's really what happened to us. And, and then, of course, you could digest it because it was full of all the fiber, all the oil, all the wheat germ and, you know, bran that was supposed to be in it originally. It was right there. So, you know, and, yeah, and I you, think on, your, on your website, I noticed that because I was ordering last, I was going on last night to look at what I could order, and... um you have those fresh grains that you can order, but where would someone, yeah. if, if they can't have you deliver, they're not in Oklahoma or Texas, you know, where would they go to get those grains so that you store their milk? Just go to a health food store, go to even Kroger's. They've got a section that's organic, and you can usually find quinoa, millet. You might be able to find whole grain. If you can't, you just grab one of their employees and find out who to ask and ask them. I, I really would like to pick up whole wheat here the whole wheat, not the not the ground, get it whole and fresh, and then take it home and play with it. You'll you'll really be pleasantly surprised. It's delicious and it makes soft. It's not a hard product when you eat the bread or the cinnamon rolls. They're really really good, and I think people will be pleasantly surprised when people get turned on to just making. It's kind of like if you've ever had if you love coffee and you like to grind the beans and have it fresh that way. You get turned on to really good coffee. It's similar. You just grind the grain. You have flour now. Make the recipe like you were going to make it, and you will be pleasantly surprised at how good your baking is. And then you'll be so thrilled because you'll know 
oh, this is, you'll instinctively know this is good for me. So if we were to bake with this whole grain, we just switch in real butter. We don't use Crisco or, you know, some kind of odd oil like canola oil. We use real butter or real olive oil or real coconut oil. We use real sea salt rather than just salt. We use a natural sugar, so we're getting the minerals and the vitamins that are naturally in sugar in there. And we usually cut our sugar back a little bit. And before we know it, we've got a great cake or a great bread that we can feel good about, that I'm excited to give to my kids, and I don't feel like I have to limit them as much. And they're all in their weight range, too, by the way. I mean, that's a good thing to say. You know, they're healthy. They're in their weight range. They all have great digestion. Nobody is struggling here with those kinds of things. And I think a mother should just assess and say, you know, okay, what are, what, are, what do we struggle with or what are the issues and could that be diet-related? And if it is, wow, if you can if you can help grow a family with, with their taste buds enjoying cabbage and kale and a whole grain, what a gift. Yes, that's wonderful. Okay, so go through your pantry real quick for us. Okay. So, okay, so we talked about, you know, vegetables and fruit. That's all there. And right now, if you walk in my kitchen, there's a pile. I mean, there's big amounts of pears and apples and things like that. There's tomatoes sitting out in the refrigerator. I already have a huge kale salad. I have a carrot fennel salad, and I have just a bunch of lettuce chopped up, or not chopped, but cut, torn up, so that when we just pull all that out, we've got a variety to eat, and then we can add a meat to it. So that's part of my pantry. If you go actually into the drier part of the pantry and the, you know, the things that aren't cold or kept in the refrigerator, you're going to find sea salt. Okay. You're going to find just, you know, regular pepper and then all the spices. At this point in my life, all the spices are what you call non irradiated or they're organic or both. And so they're more natural. But, you know, I went through the spices I had and, and the thing about spices is use them. Basil is good for you. Grow them in your yard if that's what you want to do because they're full of uh, healing and and for me, I look back at even Genesis in the first part of the Bible, the first couple of chapters. It talks about herbs are for your healing. That's why I get excited about like the essential oils that people are taking because those come from plants. Well, the same thing: basil, oregano, cayenne, all that stuff is in my cabinet. Um, turmeric, anti-tumor, is what it, is what the research shows. So all those herbs and spices are there, and I use them. Cinnamon is another one. This morning, the children had oatmeal. It had butter in it, it had sea salt, and it had um, cinnamon. And cinnamon helps your blood sugar stay steady. So, you know, that's just one of those things. So that's in the pantry. Um, What else is in the pantry? Oils. So what you'll find is real butter in the refrigerator. You'll find ghee, which is a refined butter, in in my cabinet, in my pantry. You'll find organic, first cold pressed olive oil. Okay. Coconut oil. And we go for the coconut oil. We don't do the refined coconut oil. We do the 100% and you'll taste the coconut flavor. And that right there is a whole product people could talk about for a long time. There's so much you can do with coconut oil, so many fun things. Like you can make a coconut oil sugar scrub that's just real practical and makes your skin feel great. But just taking a spoonful of that, from what they're saying in the research, it affects your thyroid. So it's a positive thing. My mother is a great example because she used to have Hashimoto's disease. She had hypothyroidism and she doesn't have it anymore. Now you go to the doctor and they diagnose you with that and they're going to tell you it cannot change, that it doesn't go right. away. But I can tell you it did. So, I mean, I'm excited about that. I don't mean that to be, you know, taken wrong, but it's neat to say, wow, there's hope. Somebody overcame this. And some, some little boy that I used to have in my home overcame the need for Adderall. And it wasn't, it was nothing magical. It was very simple, 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 practical. Simple is simple and practical mixed together. <laughs> we just made a new word, in. Okay, you can't just float over. Now, the Hashimoto, I know, because my daughter had it too, and now she doesn't. And so right. it's interesting that eating well, which is what you're teaching people, what it can get rid of. But you did say Adderall, and so you don't. So do you know what was it, just your son being on these healthy foods? I don't think there was I, – I can't think of anything else that changed. He had good rest. He had, you know, going to sleep at night, uh, play, sunshine, you know, healthy food. And he had been in a foster care so – he, he came to us into, from foster care and from a bad situation. So, you know, he wasn't nourished well. And when the nourishment came, the attention came – the 
you know, order. I mean, we definitely put order into his life and that kind of thing. So there was more than just food, but there was nothing magical other than a healthier family, healthy food, you know, water. I would have him drink. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'd say, you know what? You know what? We, we could, at that time, we had soft drinks in our in our diet. So I said, okay, before you have that, I want you to drink this much water. And it was about a cup, a cup, maybe a cup and a half of water. Drink this. Then you can have that. And so even now, if we do a soft drink, often we'll do a Vir- Virgil's brand, which is um, not corn syrup, and it's not high fructose corn syrup. They use a natural sugar, and you can also get it with stevia, which means there's no, no sugar in it. But regardless of it, even then, I'll say to my children, you know, drink a glass of water. I like to, I enjoy coffee. I'll en- I drink a quart of water almost every morning before I ever, you know, pour the coffee down. So those are little tricks that we would do back then, and even now, just the water alone makes a tremendous difference. Just that. I do that, too. So, First thing in the morning, I'll have a, a bottle of water or a cup of water before I have my coffee. I think that's and, wonderful. Uh, I think it's very yeah. wise to do that. Now, what you know, kind so, of water? Do you just drink tap water? No. I definitely drink pure, purified water. And um, I used the East Spring, which was a, a product from Amway, for years. And right now, I actually have water softener, a water softener for the whole house. So anywhere in the house, I can drink fresh water from any tap. It's purified. But I really believe in that. I believe in that big time because if you don't even like it, if you're drinking it and it tastes terrible, you know, I just think you're not going to do well. So I know people have Berkey filters and there's different ways of doing it. We, our Amway one was a carbon block filter and mm-hmm. it just continuously flows. So I like that because I've been in situations where, you know, families have Berkey's and they run out of water or they, you know, they really limited. But when you get one that will give you continuous flow, I think that is just one of the best decisions a family can make. Yes, yeah, so and we go to um, we go to Sunshine Herbs, a, grow, a health food store in Saginaw, um, and they have that. We buy a big, giant, five-gallon bottle of water that we can just, mm-hmm. you know, with the spout. And then we also, you know, that way you get it. So however you can get it, it's better to have the purified than the chlorine and chlorine itself is not good and the fluoride's not good but you put everything else in there that they have in there so okay that's what I wanted to know and I, and yeah. I think honestly when you talk about your pantry um, I know that people um, when my power went out and I was talking to you I, I was saying this about lettuce that for me in the co-op the things and just in general when I would buy food I do really well with salads and fruits for a while and then at times I may slowly slide off of that and in that time, food starts going bad. And so that's why I grew um, in pots and in the garden things like lettuce and salad and uh, salad, lettuce and spinach. And I haven't planted kale. I should do that, though. Um, and then my spices, because I, I bought uh, cilantro comes in pretty big amounts, and a lot of it would go bad. And mm-hmm. so if I grew it in my garden, I could just go get it when I need it. And then the lettuce doesn't go bad. And then the fruits, like... We put a peach tree in, which we're just getting peaches, because mm-hmm. often if I'm not doing real well health, health-wise as far as what I'm eating, the, the peaches would go bad. So there is something about um, having some things, you can just put them in pots. Right. I think that's awesome. And I think it's awesome to, you know, write it. we have so much, just if we just grew it ourselves or grew some of it ourselves, there's just something really sweet about that. And I think it's great for children, too, even if, excuse me, for my children, if we just do herbs, I'm excited. If we grow some herbs, they love it. They love to go snip some mint and put it in water and, you know, or different drinks. And so anything we do like that is just great. And that's the kind of thing that is, I don't know, it's special. It's special if you grow berries. It's special if you grow cherry tomatoes. I mean, think about how expensive it is to buy cherry tomatoes in the store, you know, but if you grow them yourself, that's super. I mean, that's, I think that's definitely the direction a lot of people are going is to make sure that they have something growing and it, herbs are great because most people cannot make those feel bad. <laughs> that's an easy grow. And then you can branch yeah. out into growing other things. Well, you know, they talk about people storing up food and buying cans and boxes and food that'll last five years and stuff like that. I, I never understood why they just didn't plant gardens, you know, and cause then they have their own food. You know, and and they, if they have, you know, if you were to grow cabbage, like um, if you were to actually do that, and you turn it into sauerkraut, now you have something that will. I mean, I know that some people love sauerkraut and some people don't, but what a power-packed food, and very, very good for your gut. Will help you, you know, fight 
any kind of sickness that would put on you, um, and it would be very, very inexpensive. So there's things like that that definitely can do. And I would say back to the pantry, that cultured food is really important. So it's something to grow into as well. It's, it's, when you look at yogurt, you want to get whole fat, from what I understand, and you want to make sure there's culture in there that it's, you know, that it's not denatured. And the same thing with your sauerkraut. There's a brand called Betty's Brand, and it's listed there on my website if you, if you look there. But that brand is the natural form of sauerkraut, the old-fashioned way, not boiled, and so you've got the good for your gut stuff. So as an example, if we were to eat something that we know is low or difficult to digest, like a pizza that we didn't make ourselves that we bought, then we add to it a side dish of sauerkraut and some salad or that carrot dish I was talking about. So when we do that, yes, we have something that didn't digest well, and there is nourishment in that pizza, but when we add to it something like sauerkraut on the side or a salad, now we're talking. Now we're talking. We're going to have good digestion. We're not going to have, you know, those kinds of issues because we're thinking about what we're doing and not just filling the pie hole, you know, just making ourselves satisfied until the next time. So cultures take a big one, and there's some in our, we keep those in our refrigerator. But hey, Monica, one. your phone sounds kind of muffled. I don't know if you uh, moved or what you did. Okay, how am I doing now? I'm still a little um, muffled. Better? Yeah. Okay. Another reason I even say this is, you know, my mom, she likes to listen to the show all the time. But if it's a little muffled, she'll have trouble hearing it. And so I'm always okay. trying to make sure you can hear clearly. Um, and so one of the things you said, you, know, you were talking about sauerkraut, right? Yeah. You know, and it's interesting about fermented foods like kefir. And things. I think a lot of people don't realize about fermented foods. Um, and so for you... In in your pantry and the things that you try to give your family, um, is there anything else that you can tell us that's some of the most important things? Okay, so just real fast recap: the vegetables, fruit. I think that's easy for people to. Yeah, fruit almost everybody. Okay, and I can't hear you. I cannot believe you can't it. Hear me? Okay. Um, How about now? Yeah, better, much better. Okay, okay. so what I'm saying is remember your fruits and vegetables and keep building what you're doing there so that you're eating larger quantities probably than you've ever eaten in your life. It's taking up, let's say, 75% of your diet. That would be awesome. And then the second thing was, was we talked about the whole grains. You can definitely go there, but if you have um, the gluten challenges, you may not want to go there from the beginning. You may want to take six months just to clean up. Okay, then the third thing that would be the sweeteners. They're all available now, and they're usually even in Kroger's, so everybody can get them. And then I would reduce sweeteners? down my sweeteners, make it a goal, like what you've done in your life. You're saying, I'm not going to do it right now at all. And then if you transition back to using sweeteners, use things like local raw honey. That's actually really important. And um, okay. real maple syrup. And then fruit spreads, and not just your jellies that are full of high fructose corn syrup. Turn it around, look at the bottle, and see what's there. And if it's not very simple and easy to understand, just put it back and get some other things, okay? So your sweeteners need to change. Your, your salt needs to change the sea salt. So that's something almost everybody can do fairly easily. And then I would say ease into healthier dairy, healthier meat. Reduce it down so it's not huge. But, yes, you can have meat. There's no problem with that. Just get, it, get better sources. Keep upping that. And that was the thing for us. So I've got four daughters. I have hormone problems. I don't want to give them meat that's been tainted or, or you know, messed up. So... We, we reduced our meat completely down to nothing for a while. Then we brought it back in small quantities, and we get good sources. So that's kind of where we've gone with that. And the dairy okay. thing, we reduced it, and then we changed it to the healthier forms. Okay, like, no, I don't know. Let me, let me mm-hmm. review you real quick, okay, because you're still muscled. Okay, number one, you said the fruits and vegetables, right? Yeah. And then number two, it was the flour, milling your own flour. Yeah. If you can. Um. And then, and then let's, of course, unless you have gluten issues. Um, and then number three, you said sweeteners. Now, yeah. you're not talking about Splenda and things like that. You're talking about natural sweeteners like honey and agave and, um, I mean, I know we use stevia. What do you think about stevia? I think stevia is great. It's an herb. Oh, okay. It's from plants. It's wonderful. You're making a good choice there. There's a natural sugar called sucanat, or just in the store, you'll find the natural sugar, and it'll say it has the minerals in it. It's not refined. It's not that pure white 
sugar that we all grew up on. But they okay, let me, blood. I know that one of the things we're going to be wrapping up, and I hate that your phone just kind of got muffled, but to review for people, she's saying um, not the pure white sugar. So my, my suggestion would be the, the regular cane sugar, if you can get it, um, the honey, the agaves, uh, stevia, anything like that. Um, Monica, I know that you're, I know I said it wrong earlier, it's yourhealthsource.org, and your name is Monica Brown. You guys look her up, join her co-op, go look at her YouTube videos, and go to her store so that you can see all the things that she has in her pantry that you can get for you, too. Thank you so much for being with us, Monica. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, wonderful, and we'll talk to you soon. And we'll have you back on in a few weeks so you can share more, and we'll get you a better connection. You guys have a wonderful week. Thanks for listening, and live well. Thank you again for joining us. Living Well with Ann Beal airs live every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. We can't wait to see you again next week. 